when I came here and I started thinking about the Earth being like an island, you know, if you if you were to step back from the Earth, right, you, all you would see is blank, empty space and a couple of planets and moons and things like that. But I mean, it's really we're really on our own. If you think about it. There's nobody coming with supplies no. or anything like that. And so um, when you think about environmental problems, if we acted like we were on an island, we'd be better off. Because that's where we're at right now. We are at the point where I assess the job, I bid on the job, I got the job, and then I scheduled the job and I, and I did my planning. So now I'm ready to actually do the work, right? So here's what I want you to write down. There's three S's. There's three S's of deconstruction. And um, that's what I, I came up with those S's because I want to make it easier to remember. You ready, right? It's, um, it's salvage. The first word is salvage. First S. The second S is strip out. And I'm going to tell you what these are in a second, but I want you to write it down. Salvage and then strip out. Okay, and then the last one is structure. It's easy to remember because they're all S's. Salvage, strip out, structure. Because we got the job, now we actually we're done talking about it. It's time to do the work, you know. And um, um, what is salvage? Salvage to me is surface items usually. Like in the gym, it would be the seating. It would be the uh, it would be the basketball. It would be the railings, you know. Not necessarily the railings, but maybe the cables. Things like that. It would certainly be the lighting and the windows and doors. You know, they're all on the surface, aren't they? You know, like if you think about, it, is it in the wall or is it on the wall? It, you know, a door is more. You know, I guess it's in the wall and on the wall. But anyway, the um, it. You know, you if you were building a wall, you would build the wall and then you would put the door in the wall. Does that make sense? That's right, right? Well, that's we do the opposite of that. You know, we we. We take the door out of the wall so it doesn't get damaged when we knock the wall over to take it apart, you know? Um, so salvage is things like that. It's doors, it's cabinets, it's trim. And you know the very last thing that, I, if I was building a house, the last thing that I would put in is the carpet. Because why? Because I don't want it to get dirty, you know? So I might wait till the very end to put carpet in because I don't want to, I don't want to get it dirty. You know, it's brand new. And everything I do in a job site is going to get it dirty. So, but if that's true, then the first thing I would want to remove is the car. Um, and, um, but anyway, that would be part of the salvage. The strip out um, would be things like the wiring. It would be things like taking sheetrock off the walls. You know, um, it would be things like removing, you know, the pipes that you need to remove for to get the wall taken apart. You know, you've got all these pipes running through or duct work or something like that. So um, it would be things like finishes though, like lap and plaster or, or drywall, you know, stuff like that. So that's what, that's what the strip out is. It could also be insulation that's inside the, the you know, that's in the attic or in the walls. Um, so the thing is, the salvage is things on the surface, and they usually are worth something, but they're also something that can get damaged more easily, so you want to get them out first. And then you've got strip out, and then by the time you're done with that, you're kind of down to the structure. So you see the third word is structure, and that would be like, yeah, I'm literally taking the roof off, and then the ceilings, and then the walls, and then the floors, you know, so that's the structure. So that's the three S's, so keep that in mind for the test, right? Um, when I say fill and grade, what I'm really referring to is that you, you've you removed a building and now it has a, let's say it has a basement, and you've got to fill that basement, 
and then you've got to grade it off so that it's, you know. So you so if you think about like fill and grade, like what that wouldn't that would be that wouldn't be the first thing you do, right? Because that's after the building is gone. So that would probably be one of the last things you do. Think about it, right? right. Fill and grade, right? But the other thing is it says abate. And it, it, right, isn't one of them abate? Yes. Yeah. So what is abate? I mean, in 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 our world, abate means to remove hazardous materials. <coughs> and you think about it, like, wouldn't you want to abate materials soon? Like, because they're hazardous. <laughs> it might be one of the first things you would want to do when you take a building down. And since you know, and that's part of. Uh, I didn't mention it during the environmental hazard section, but um, when I do this kind of work, I go out and I assess the building, and I bid on the building, and I get the job. Mm -hmm. But then I schedule the job. But when I'm scheduling the job, I'm scheduling the abatement people, right? And that's what says abate. That means that I have them coming in to take out any lead and asbestos and mercury ahead of time because once that stuff's gone, I can work safely in the building, right? So once it's gone, then I come in and do the salvage, then I do the strip out, and then I do the structure. Okay, makes sense, right? The other thing I do is I have the power turned off, I have the water turned off, I have the gas turned off. So that scheduling section, you know, and that's something that is one of these sections coming up where we talk about all those different steps. Um, you'd be surprised after, I always say day one of the job, I have all these tools with me. I have screwdrivers and I have wrenches and I have pipe cutters and I have all these different things and I use them the first day, you know. But once I get down in a wood structure, once I get down to I, I often just have like a hammer and pry bar and a sawzall, you know, like a, uh, and, and the rest of the job, I might, own, I might mainly just use that because um, a lot of those other things, we, we've removed the items and we don't need them anymore. So um, now that's an exaggeration. Obviously, I still need other tools. It's just that it gets, it seems to get, for me anyway, once you get past that initial phase, things seem to get a little more straightforward. Um, <coughs> but you know, there's, there's having tools, there's having the right tools, and then there's having enough tools. Like if you have a crew, a bigger crew, and I've had jobs where there, people are waiting to use a hammer. Like they, they, there aren't enough hammers, so then they're, they're saying, hey, can I borrow that? And that's never, that's never really a good thing. Um, so what we do is we try to um, have people spread out and do different things so that they're using different tools. And some of them are carrying things and loading things and they don't need tools for that. Um, so this is, a, this is a structure on St. John, it's in your book. Um, you know, when I think about like what tools would I need to to take that down, and what it is is it's a it's like a gazebo kind of that's what we call them, gazebos, and it's like it's in this public square, right by the fair, you know, and um, it's just this canopy over a platform with it's on posts, you know, and I'm like, wow, what would I what would I need tool wise to get that down? How would I want to take that down? Because it looks kind of precarious when you think about it, you know, like as you take it apart. Um, but also, you know, what would I be saving from it? And um, uh, that's part of the, the, you know, it's not just about what tools do you need. It's like, well, what what process do I need to get go through to get this down? And do I want to? You know, because I'm really working to save all these short pieces of wood. It looks, it's a beautiful structure. It's just taking it apart. Um, I'm not sure what you would have left. And so, like in our case, we start wondering, is this something where we could save this structure in, in chunks and then reassemble it somewhere else? And 
that's just like, I, it's kind of a crazy concept, but, um, but it leads me to my next point, which is sometimes we use to tools, like hand tools, and sometimes we use equipment. And so that's kind of in my tool category. Another type of a tool is a piece of equipment that can lift something like this up and, um, and keep it intact because it can so heavy you know, and big that you want to have tools and equipment. And um, I did go to the store while I was here and I saw hammers for $66. What it says there, sixty-seven dollars for that hammer, um, and um, the shackles were three dollars and seventy-nine cents. And I'm like, if where I live, they'd be four dollars. So I don't understand. Like, I understand. Like, how? What is the deal? Like, how could they be less expensive here, but the hammer is like, it, you know, more than twice as expensive as what I would pay, you know, for that hammer. You know, it's sixty-seven dollars on St. John, but for me, it would be more like twenty-seven dollars. You know, so that's great. Um, and um, the duct tape, yeah, seventeen dollars. Is that? I had to check that. You know, like um, to to us, that would be like that would be like six ninety-nine. You know, and so I just I guess the thing is, you know, I don't I, I imagine. If you were starting an operation, and it isn't necessarily you, right? But the whole point of this is, can we get you guys to start? Okay, maybe we, you guys can get somebody else to start an operation. The people that you're helping, then you know. But when they go to get started, what's it going to take? You know, I have tools. I don't have to go buy all the tools, right? I, I buy one here and there. And, and I'm, it's not a big deal. But if I was living here and I moved here and I had to buy all the tools and it costs like ten thousand dollars or something like that, that would be that would be hard to absorb. So, so like if you were a contractor and you broke a tool and you absolutely needed it, then you go and buy it. Right. And you you said uh, I guess I gotta buy it. But otherwise, you try to find an alternative. Mm -hmm. I like that. Um, okay. Well, we'll. We will, uh, okay, so here's kind of a summary of tools. I, 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 I kept it really short, but um, um, there's, there's certain essential tools that we just can't live without. And um, when I say there's a hammer, I got a picture of a hammer, but is that a hammer that I would buy or would I buy a bigger hammer because I'm doing heavier work, you know? Or I could have a picture of a little pry bar, or I could say, well, here's the pry bars I use. Some of them are six feet long, you know, because the work, we're, we're tearing entire buildings apart. We're not just doing, you know, like small little jobs. So so we we have tools, but we, we specifically have some tools that are really geared for what we're doing. You know, they're not finished, we're not doing finished work all the time. So we. We actually have a tool that's called a nail kicker, and what it does is it, sh it doesn't shoot nails into boards, it shoots nails out of boards, okay? It's not a nail gun, it's a denailing gun, right? And my friend invented it, so, and he, um, we were, you know, always saying how hard it was to pull all these nails. You can imagine, mm -hmm. you know, you could pull like thousands of nails out of a single house. But you don't have to if the gun shoots them out for you. You know, you can skimp a little bit on tools, but right. you, you don't want to skimp on those tools because, you know, we have the pry bar I use all the time is four feet long. It's not a little pry bar and it weighs a little bit, but you know, the thing is it's it, it's in use all the time. So we don't we don't skimp on that. You know, we make sure we have some of these essential tools that are meant for us, you know. Like who else is pulling thousands of nails in us? <laughs> we have our own tool for that. Um, essential equipment, we, oh, we're always renting these outreach forklifts, these telehandlers they're called, and they're, they're like a forklift that can reach out in front of itself, or it can reach three or four stories high if it needed to. And um, we're always using those because 
we need that access, right? Access is huge for us, and that forklift lets us grab things from farther away and move things around that are, that are inefficient for people to do. Um, so they're, you know, some people call them telehandlers, some people call them outreach forklifts, but that would be an example of a, an essential piece of equipment. I know that it would be tough on the islands here. I've seen a couple of them around town, so I know they're here. It's just, um, I'm sure they're really expensive. And some, but I have to justify why am I renting this? Well, it's, because uh, if I don't rent it, I'm going to have you know a lot of labor to do a job. Uh, the crew size is something that's really difficult since COVID started. Especially, I've talked to a lot of my people; they can't find any workers. You know, um, uh, they're they're lucky to have the ones they have. Uh, but you know, I've taken I've literally taken entire homes down by myself. Um, just so that I can practice, see how it went, and then it forces me to figure out how to do things more efficiently, because it's, it's not like I'm just, I can just say, oh, I, I can't think what you should do, just go do this, you know? It's like, with, then it's only me, and I, everything has to be like super efficient. And so that's how we got to the point where we could take a house down that was like 2,000 square feet, and we can take it down in like three days. And, and I don't mean demolish it, you know, I mean like save everything. So um, we've gotten faster. Um, and part of that is me experimenting by doing things on my own or, or trying to use fewer people, but we really want, normally we have five to eight people doing this kind of work. I'll just say that. Normally it's five to eight people. So, um, oh, okay, and then I don't know, some communities have tool share programs where you could actually share and of course there's tool rental options out there i guess and um, but the cost of tools here are definitely part one of those challenges i mentioned so